Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Q&A session dedicated to our new feature, Consolidate Emails. So if any of you join uh, haven't heard or read much about Consolidated Emails, they're generated when a recipient's due to receive uh, more than one email for the same action. So instead of receiving multiple emails, Consolidate Emails gives you the option to receive a single email. So your emails are more, your emails and communications generally are more efficient um, and for your customers and for your team. It's leading to a better inbox and just a better overall customer experience. So this means uh, if four delegates booked by the same booking user or all assigned the status have completed, within a couple of minutes uh, of one another, then only one email is going to be sent to them instead of previously without this feature, they would have got four individual emails. And you can also do the same with uh, other certificates, with other emails, sorry. Um, so for example, you could have this option here, which shows you courses running today. So this is going to consolidate all the courses running today into one email instead of having an email per course. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Jack and I led a session to tour through the new consolidate emails functionality and how it all works. Uh, this is available on demand for you to watch or share with your team via the customer hub on our website. Um, today's session is all about answering any questions you have for us about consolidated emails. Uh, whether this is something you've thought about as you've been building some, or if you happen to be looking for a solution and you're wondering if Consolidate Emails can do it. Um, the session is here uh, to help with those questions, basically. Uh, now, if there's anything we can't answer today, we're going to take note of it, we're going to find the answer, and we'll share that answer with everyone who has come along to today's session via email. So the Q&A box is open. Uh, please submit questions that you've got in there. Um, Whatever the question is, as we say, if we can't answer it, we'll take it away. But anything to do with consolidate emails, please pop them in the chat uh, and we'll do our best to answer them today. Uh, whilst we wait for any questions to come in, uh, anyone that doesn't know us yet already, uh, my name is Jack and I'm one of the customer success managers here at Access Planet. Uh, so my role really is to make sure that you, all our customers, are getting the most out of your platform. You're getting that return on the investment and you're continually optimizing your platform, making, you, making those time savings and just delivering a, customer, a great customer experience overall. Yeah, and I'm Sean Poole. I'm one of the customer support advisors here at Access Planet. Uh, one of my roles is to support you with getting to grips with your platform, any new features, uh, answering any questions you have, uh, support you with setting up new features and troubleshooting any issues that you have. Just a reminder, this session is also being recorded and it will be available on our on-demand webpage. So if you need to drop out or you want to share it with any of your teams, uh, please feel free to. That'll be on shortly after the session. So um, we've got some questions um, to uh, get answered. So the first one we'll start with is uh, how are attachments, so things such as joining instructions, certificates handled within consolidated emails. So document templates attachments, so things like your certificates that attach individually for each delegate. So if you've got four delegates, you're still gonna get each individual certificate attached. It's just gonna be on the one email. Any attachments that exceed the 20 megabit limit, will uh, emails will be split. So documents attached from files, for example, such as terms and conditions, they'll only be attached once. So if you've got four delegates, you're only going to get one set of terms and conditions. Anything like your document templates, so your certificates, that'll be individual documents, one for each delegate. So uh, that's great. Uh, and the next one we've got is um, testing consolidated emails. So obviously when you get a, when you create this email template that you've got, you want to make sure it looks exactly how you want it to look. So you can test by previewing the template with multiple delegates. Um, you just review the displayed merge fields and send that test email to make sure it appears um, as expected. We'll actually show you how that works. Um, so you can kind of just see where you would go for that. So what I'm going to do is just share, um, share a screen with one of our demo platforms. And then from here, you'll get an idea of uh, where to go to do that. So I'm just going to reshare. All right. Nice one. So we are now in our platform. Um, and from here, you'll then be able to, um, you can see that we've got an email template here. And we've named it consolidated so we can find it nice and easily. To preview it, you've got a couple of options. But we're going to go from the edit menu. So when you go into the edit menu, you'll get all your different options. So it's a normal email template that you would set up as standard. And then if you if we look in the body of the text, you can see we've got some of the consolidated um, formatting here. This is going to tell us how to uh, how to consolidate it. 
when we created this consolidated, um, the, the look of how it's going to display, you can click this preview and test button at the bottom. So this recently said preview. It now says preview and test to make it a bit clearer. So if we click that, this is now going to uh, give you the option to want to choose what we're previewing. We'll click that select option. And then I have uh, these, these test candidates that I've set up earlier on. I'm going to select all of these. So you need to set multiple delegates so you can see how uh, obviously those emails will send or that email email will now send. Click OK. Select multiple. It's a good idea. To, yeah, it's amazing how you can see actually what it looks like. So then we select all those delegates. So then you can see when you scroll down, we've got our, uh, this is what we've booked onto. So we've booked onto the basic first day training course. Uh, we've got the start and the end time, which is January 2028. So we're booking really fine in advance. Um, but you can see here, this is what we, these are all the delegates that we've booked on. So we've got the name of the delegate and we've got that in nice bold so we can see where each delegate starts. And then we've got the user ID of the delegate and also their status. And then that just lists each individual candidate that we've booked onto the course. Before you would have got an individual email for each of these delegates, but now with this feature, it's all just together in one, which is which is great. So that's how you test it. You can see as you go what that looks like and make sure those the, the formatting really is how you want it to be. Um, and it kind of fits within, the, within your branding too. So uh, yeah, that's how you test the, uh, how you test out that feature. Nice one. Um, so the next question, uh, Jack, if you wouldn't mind leaving it on that page, that would be really handy. Thank okay. you. Um, so the question, I saw in the last webinar that you can include words and punctuation alongside the merge fields and have that repeat for each delegate. Can you please talk me through how this works? Um, Yes, we certainly can. Anything within the at at square brackets is your consolidated content. And if I need to zoom in just a little bit there for you guys. OK, so currently we've got at at candidate forename and candidate surname in bold, followed by the user ID and the status. So what we can do is include a comma at the end of each section. And when we preview this, selecting multiple candidates again. So everybody registered today and we click OK. What that's going to do is add commas at the end of each of the consolidated content, um, though including a comma at the end is probably not recommended just because it will have a comma right at the end rather than, say, a full stop. So it's best to just leave that as a as a, as a sort of a, a line break end brackets. Um, just because it can look a little bit strange in your email just to end on a comma. And again, this is what the preview looks like in Access Planner, just going back to the previous question. Um, you have the option, of course, to uh, to, to preview and send uh, at the very top there. You can send your sample to uh, an email address such as your own, and you can see what that looks like in Outlook as well. So there's that option for you too. Um, so the next question, if we can move back to the, uh, mm -hmm. the PowerPoint. Yep. So which types of emails can be consolidated? Can I consolidate new generated invoices? Um, sorry, can I consolidate new generated invoice emails to my customers together? Um, yes, so all workflow email actions can be consolidated. So that covers course, delegates, invoices, opportunities, um, so yeah, we did a lot of scoping and work with quite a few customer groups as part of our loop club uh, when defining this new feature. And the main use cases that were raised from this research was course and delegate emails. So we've written up our supporting materials and documentation really focusing on these emails, uh, but it is available for all, including invoice emails. Great, thanks. Uh, just a reminder that the Q&A is still open, so any of the questions that you may have that we haven't answered yet, please feel free uh, to pop them in that Q&A box or in the chat also. Uh, so the next question that we're going to come on to is, uh, is there a maximum number of delegates that can be included in one email? So, for example, you may have 30 plus customers, sorry, one customer booking 30 plus delegates at a time. Uh, the answer in short is no. There is only a maximum when uh, attachments are involved. So, and that's basically to avoid the email being rejected by by different filters. So we mentioned this before, but the attachments, such as certificates, um, if they reach a total size of 20 megabytes, then a new email will be created for the next set of delegates. So when you get to 20 megabytes, it's then going to tip over into another one. So if you have six on the first one out of 10 delegates, the next email can contain the next four, assuming that are still under the 20 megabyte limit. Uh, and then the next one we've had is how does the time frame setting work? So um, when a delegate meets the rules of a workflow and that workflow is ready to be sent, 
uh, the workflow will wait for the time frame to see if any other delegates meet the rules for that email. So if there are other delegates, they'll then be consolidated into one email. Otherwise, the email will send after that time frame has elapsed. Any additional delegates added after the time frame has passed will then be included on a different email. So that's where that email, that time frame comes in. We've got one, two, and five minutes. Most people aren't going to be able to see multiple bookings within a minute, so your consolidation should be fine. If you're wanting to send all your emails at the end of a day, for example, when um, everything's set at five o'clock to completed, for example, if we're looking at sending certificates out, um, it could then, in fact, bulk everything together for you book it all in one email if you set, say, a five-minute limit. So it just depends on really on what you're wanting to consolidate. Depends on how that time frame is used. I would say a minute for your course bookings. Um, things like certificates, if you want to send one email to a booker or something at the end of the day, five minutes may be a better option to make sure you've got time to set all those stages as completed to then find all those delegates that then meet that workflow rule. So, yeah, there's different options. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you're not sure on that, just reach out and we can kind of give you a bit of advice depending on what you want to do. Nice one. So the next question is a pretty good question. Um, so we turned on consolidated emails last week. Why does the communications data grid not include the consolidated email? Which is, that was a brilliant question. I was asking the same thing. Um, the communications module in your platform is a little bit different to the email logs page that you can see. So while the email logs page shows you a list of the emails that have been sent from your platform, the content of these emails, the recipients, the communications data grid instead shows you all of the communications that are mapped or linked to certain things. For example, all of the communications that are mapped to a certain delegate record, a certain account, or an invoice. So when you view a delegate, you can click to see all of the communications that have been generated and that are mapped to that delegate. The reason that the communications data grid currently doesn't show the non, sorry, it doesn't show the consolidated version um, is that it isn't currently possible to link one communication to multiple delegates. So while the email logs will show you the true email that was sent, the communications data grid shows you that this delegate has had a reminder email generated, uh, a, a reminder or a certificate, for example, with the email content that's relevant to just this delegate. Whereas if you go to the email logs in the administration, you will see the, the true email that was sent with the, the entire content, the consolidated content there. It's just that we, we can't currently map communications to to multiple mappings. That's a good question. So the next question. Our customers often book several courses running on one day for their employees, but these could be at different locations. I'd like to send one email per location, brackets venue, to the customer so that I can list all of the courses and delegates that will be attending site A together, and then all of the courses and delegates that will be attending site B together on a second email, and so forth. Can this be done? So the answer to that question is yes, that can be done. Uh, to achieve this, you would need to build your email template with a list of delegates and course details together using the new merge field formatting. And then also in that email, include venue merge fields. Because the emails will only include one venue's information, you do not need to use the special new formatting. Within your workflow action settings, you would use the consolidate option of group by and select venue ID. Um, this will then group the delegates that are put together by venue and create an email for each. Yeah, that's a really good question too. It just shows the, the consolidated emails that's really flexible with what you can group by. And that group by option option is great. You can group by course ID, but then here we've got an option, an idea of, uh, an option for venue ID. So it's just flexible with what you're wanting to consolidate on. Um, really gives you the flexibility to make sure that you can consolidate on pretty much anything. Um, it's pretty it's pretty flexible. <laughs> um, that is all the questions we've got for now. We will leave the Q&A box open for a few more minutes and see if any last minute questions come in. If they do, we'll hopefully get those answered for you. Um, if that is all, then we will look to finish uh, in the next few minutes. Um, just a reminder, we have got more uh, upcoming webinars coming up. We've got more coming up this week. Um, we've got an automation one, which is on Thursday. These are all free to attend. Um, and I'll put the QR code on the screen now um, and you'll be able to uh, then have a look at what we've got coming up for the rest of the week. So on Thursday, we've got a webinar for platform automation. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then on the 23rd of July, we have a webinar all relating to um, promoting and sending product, uh, products that you sell using the products and services module. Um, so they're the next two that we have coming up. Um, and that's at two o'clock on the 23rd of July. As I mentioned, these are all free to attend. So please feel free to uh, come along to as many as you like. 
All the recordings are also available on the website after the session has taken place. You can use the QR code in the top right of the screen to join on any of the events. Um, and as I say, they're all free to attend. We'll hang around for a couple more minutes, see if any other questions come in. And uh, if not, we will uh, finish this webinar for today. As mentioned, this is recorded and will be on the website along with all of our other webinars. Um, and we'll leave the upcoming events on just so you can see what's coming up. And if you decide to book any of them, easy access by the QR code. Uh, if that is, if the number of questions come in, thank you all for attending. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on Thursday for our automation webinar. If you do have any other questions about uh, consolidate emails or just anything in general, you can drop us an email. Uh, that's customer success at accessplanning.com. And then one of the team will pick that up and get back to you. Thank you everyone for joining. And if there's no more questions, uh, we'll finish in a couple of minutes, but enjoy the rest of your day. All the best.